All right, so today I'm going to discuss two other terms that we're going to use so that when we discuss in the group, we will understand one another. Like I said, we will not be using some of those general terms again, so that we'll not come under the heavy hammer of somebody saying that we are using their content. So I'm going to define some terms, those in the first team program, or some of those in the first team program would have known this. It was not a general class, right? So I'll be discussing what to call um, clicks, right? Clicks is a short form for C liquidity. Right. We'll be discussing what um, clicks are. I will also discuss what to call paychecks. So these are just terminologies, nothing different from what we've said yesterday, but just so that we can, we can have um, you know, uniformity in the way we discuss things. So I'm drawing this randomly, completely randomly from my mind. I just drew this randomly, right? So this is, a, B, and this is C. We are assuming that this is either a ranging market on a lower time frame, or a ranging market on a higher time frame, or a trending market on a lower time frame. When we get to the chart, you understand what I mean. Now, price will not move upward or downwards until they've taken some form of liquidity. Right, so if the market is pushing up, it is because it has destroyed some people below. And if the market is moving down, it's because it just captured some money, some liquidity up there. And it's going to move far away from that point of liquidity until the pain of holding on to that position gets so heavy and those people relinquish the position. And then they begin to look for another opportunity to catch some other people, right? So if you open a trade and you click a buy or a sell, even if you're in a drawdown, technically you've not lost money until you close the trade. If you, I don't know if some of you have tried this before, but I've entered a trade with 0 0.01. It went over 400 pips against me and I left it. I later on came back and closed that trade in profit. Right, I left it for like two and a half weeks. It still came back later on and still gave me profit. Of course, the profit was not big. When I just saw small blue, I closed it and it covered for spread. Right, but the idea is this: until you close your trade, you have not lost. And the way the market moves, it moves against the head, against the majority, against a liquidity, moves to a point that the pain gets so, so heavy that those people either cut the trade, in other words, either they are stop loss or they practically just close it. Now, if we are at point C and they actually want to come down, they will go and take liquidity. The liquidity we can see on the screen right now is point B. If you remember the lecture we took yesterday, point B, is a top edge, it will be a fractal point. Point B will be a top edge, which is a fractal point. So they will come to that point B because this C is going to take B out. The liquidity available for C to take out is this point B. So this top here that C wants to take out, we'll call it C liquidity, right? The point, which is point B, that C needs to take out before running away. We call it C liquidity. Remember that is a top edge. So the liquidity for C is this point. Once it takes that liquidity, it runs back, right? Again, you will notice that point C becomes liquidity for this level here, right? Edge. So price takes this and then runs. Price takes this and then runs. Sometimes price will fail to take a liquidity. So look at this one now. Price fails to take this liquidity. When price fails to take a liquidity, we are not bothered about taking any trade. We will only trade 
been taken. Remember, we discussed that yesterday. For those of us who use other blocks, even though we say we'll stop calling all those terms now, we said never take a trade outside of an OB. Price must come to an OB for you to take the trade, right? So even if you use AQC, so here, price did not take this liquidity. So we will not bother about this, right? Those of you in the first string class, I will explain later on how you can still take this trade using your OB. But for, for the scalp, let's leave that. We are not taking this. You see, this one too didn't take out this liquidity. It's a failed auction. We call that a failed auction. It refused, it didn't come to take this. It didn't come to take this, right? This one, let's assume this one took this. So I'm going to be in this buy, right? Now, this point here, the liquidity available for you to take is this C liquidity. And there's another C liquidity here. So when there are more than one C liquidity stacked one upon the other, this becomes the C liquidity, but this becomes the paycheck, right? They will most likely come for that paycheck before running away. You see that? They will most likely come for that paycheck. So meaning that if I want to scalp, and I said I'm going to give you guys like three or four entries, there's what we call the high probability scalp. If you want to do the high probability scalp, you wait for that paycheck. It doesn't mean price will not react from here, but you wait, you wait. When they finally come to this paycheck, the move will be massive, right? So here they come to a C liquidity, they take it. Here is a failed option. You are not bothered about the trade. They came here again and took out this C liquidity. You are here for a buy, right? Now they've taken out this C liquidity. You'll be wondering, are they coming for this C liquidity or are they coming for this paycheck, right? You wait to see price action, and from there you'll be thinking of taking your trade to the downside, right? So I hope you've been able to get what I explained. I'll I will quickly do it again, not fully this time, but I'll explain it in a different way. Um, sorry. So we can all grab this. All right. So what I just did was I said that when you have a point here, which is a top edge, we call it C liquidity. If there's another top edge above that C liquidity, no matter how many they are, we call all of these paychecks. So for the purpose of, you know, um, for the purpose of uniformity, we just call this a click. Right, this it would have been good for us to call this PC, but we already have something called PC in AQZ. So I'm going to give us the opportunity to determine what we should call it. Should we call it PCH, small h, or what? I don't know. But this is click, and this is paycheck. Right. Again, the the same thing happens when we are coming down. This is a C liquidity. Right. Any other one under it, there's a, a any bottom edge under it is all will be called a paycheck. Entries usually at paychecks, but if I get an entry at C liquidity, of course, I will take the trade. Let's come to the chart and see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's call up a chart, any chart, maybe Euro GBP. Let's look for this. Yep, this should do. All right, notice I just picked any time frame, this is 30 minutes. And um, let me see on my indicators. Yeah, this is put at point zero. Let's put this at 30 minutes fractal, just for the purpose of this explanation. Just for the purpose of this explanation. Let me see. Let me make this 16 to 30 minutes. Let's make this a 60 minutes fractal. Okay, so watch what I'm trying to drive over. All right, so you can be able to see price action in a different way. Let's leave this all this drop to the downside, right? In fact, we can consider it. We can start considering from this day. 
Let me magnify this a little. So look at this day, right? This is from Asia session. Even though when we come to, when we merge all of these things together, we are going to trade high probability scalping. So which means Asia high or yesterday high would have been taken. But for now, you just see this. This red is a top, is a top edge, right? So they took out that, that top edge. Let's magnify this even further. Where is it? Yep, yeah, look at that. They took out that top edge. There is something you and I are going to look for that will tell us to sell, right? When we get there, you see it. After they took out this top edge, we are sellers, right? See, this one didn't take out this low. This is that failed option I was telling you. They didn't come back to take this fracture. They just came close to it. The failed auction. Then they went back and tapped this fractal. We will have another reason to do what? Sell. Right? I have another reason to sell. If we have reasons to buy, we might have been looking for buyers around here or here, right? Because it took out bottom edges. If we had reasons to buy, these areas will be looking for reasons um, to buy. And by the time I explain the scalping method, some of you might still enter this buy. Believe it or not, as small as this movement is, you might still be able to make some profit. If you've been following IPC and some other um, trading bots, you see that you can make profit on three piece, five piece, four, 10 piece, but you know, it's gonna be difficult for a human being to do that. You have to find a way of automating um, that. But just, I just want you to see the concept. Right, so they came here, took out this bottom edge, and then bought. What did they come for again? This first blue line is a what? Can somebody type in? What do we call this top blue? This top blue line. What do we call it? Put your answer in the chat box, guys. What do we call that top? This one here. Yeah, it's a low edge, quite all right. But we call it silly pretty. That's a click so much. What do we call the one under it? What do we call the one under it? There are two blue lines here now. One and two. One and two. What do we call the second one? Is a paycheck. Thank you so much. Is a paycheck. So if I want to buy, if I want to buy using this methodology. I will be looking for a buy around my C liquidity or my paycheck. Somebody will ask, what about this one? I'm not bothered about this one again because this one has been taken already. Price has closed below it. Price, it has been taken. If I was going to buy, I would have had my entry going long somewhere here. Right? But look at this one. It came straight for that C liquidity, came for the paycheck. That is my buy. That is my buy. You can see my buy going up. Right now, I'm looking for reasons to sell. Once I entered a buy from here, I have a paycheck, a C liquidity here, another C liquidity here, another C liquidity there. These top two are called paychecks. These top two are called paychecks. So I want to buy. That is my buy there. I got here. Is there any reason to buy? No. I have to sell? No, I'm still buying. Is there any reason to sell? No, I'm still buying. Is there any reason to sell? Yes, I got a bearish timber. But again, we are not talking about entry methods today, but we'll look at that um, when we get there, right? Can you see after they took out that paycheck, what happened? They melted down. They melted down, 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 down. They came for this C liquidity, came for this, See liquidity from paycheck and they kept dropping, right? That is our trade. We'll take our trade. Here, there's no trade. Of course, would have been done for that day already. We would have been smiling. Somewhere like um, um, Taiwo and Pretty Lady will be slapping people up and down in the Telegram group around this time now. No problem. So move forward. So here is the another. As at the time we came to the market, this was a top edge and this is a bottom edge. 
we are looking for reasons to sell. Ladies and gentlemen, we are looking for reasons to sell. Assuming, remember, I have not, we've not discussed our trend. And I said yesterday that with this strategy, you can trade in line with the trend. You can trade against the trend. However, you trade in line with the trend. Here, I'm only explaining C liquidity, bottom edge, you know, top edges. We are not even refining it in terms by, by looking at them. Um, higher time frame or trend analysis, right? So let's see that as came to this point, we'll be looking for reasons to sell. We got something that looked like a reason to sell here, right? At this point, we would have taken it. If your stop loss is very close, it would tap your stop, stop loss and take you out. Then you got another reason to sell again, and then it sold. And as we were selling, it came for this C liquidity and it came for this paycheck. And then it gave us reasons to buy, and then we would have played, if you use a robot, like I said, even with two pips and you. So the idea here is that um, bottom edge and top edges, right? Sorry guys, one minute. If I don't. All right, so we have the top edge. See how price came, took out, look at that week. See the way it took out this bottom and went straight for that. Coming down. Now, the idea I want you to see here is even if you don't make 100 pips, just imagine that you are selling, one moment, please. One moment, please. Uh, Just imagine that you are selling from the top. Right? In, uh, from that point, and all your buy trades are from here. You are entering at the lowest price possible or the highest price, possible, either at the lowest at a discount. All right, the internet is back. All right, so imagine and you are buying from this bottom you are buying at the best price possible and you are selling at the highest, that is again, the best price possible. Only if you find it difficult to switch your mind into the mind of a scalper. And again, I forgot to state that this strategy is a scalping strategy and it's not suitable for everybody. You need to have a kind of mind to be a scalper. And like we say in the fostering program, you need to be able to fry plantain, fry fish, right? Do barbecue and not taste it until it's ready, right? You need to have the ability to not be greedy, to follow simple rules when you see certain things and it's time to get out, get out. You will eventually catch the runner, but you'll be making five, 10 pips, five, 10 pips. All right, so sorry guys, I keep getting interrupted. So see how they took out that high point there. See how they took it, then came down, 
took out that low, went up, took out the high. Look at exactly what is happening. Took out the top. Most people going for it, a sell will put their stop loss above that high, took it, had a failed auction, went back and took out everybody. This was to call high probability low risk, guys. Uh, normal, that's Asia high. Took out everybody, then we'll be looking for our reasons to sell, right? That's our reason to sell. It came straight to the sea liquidity. And if we're scalping, if we're making our entry on five minutes, for instance, this distance from here to here would have given us like one is to four, right? We are out of this already. We are scalped. We're not here for the long run, except instances where the market dashes us that because the next sea liquidity is far away, right? Those of you that know how to trade OBs, which is be your second entry, this is the OB. And for if you attended the class I took on um, with the AQZ guys, I mentioned that I no longer that are not responsible for top or bottom edges. So if I get a PC, and in that PC, one of the candles, that is either the PC candle or the candle proud um, before it is not the top edge, I'm not interested, right? Same thing with OB. This OB is a is an OB I want to trade with because price, it took out a top edge, price came back and it's coming back to it. There's a possibility for it to do what? To sell. This is a top edge OB, top edge OB. But we are not discussing OB, right? So see that, let's come back here. Even in this small one, see we took out that C liquidity, uh, liquidity and push back before coming back for the paycheck, right? Then push back to the C liquidity, played around and then dropped, right? See here again, like razor sharp. So look at, that's the C liquidity up there. These other ones came up later. Right, there's the sea liquidity. Came straight for this sea liquidity down here, took it up, pushed all the way up. Right, again, if you are trading on a lower time frame, that move is like six, 17 pips, right? From this line, like 17 pips to that point. If you get your 10, you get your eight, you are good because you'll be using some sizable lot sizing. Now, and the paycheck before dropping down, before dropping down, right? See that, then took out this um, one before pushing back up and then just playing down, right? Again, I'm taking, this much time to go through this because we don't want to give too many things in one day. We we'll take it bit by bit. Today we've discussed C liquidity and paycheck. I want somebody to give me a pair. Just give me a pair of your choice, and then let's look at this. Put the pair of your choice on the chart. Pair of your choice. Somebody, first one I got is GJ. So let's try GBP, JPY. Give me the time frame of your choice. Give me the time frame of your choice. What's happening to the connection today? EG came on. GJ, what's happening? All right, I think it's back now. Okay, so this is GJ. Time frame of your choice. Let's check if anybody dropped any time frame. Somebody said, um, who gave us GJ? Okay, if I gave us GJ, did if I give us time frame, he said H4. So let's use H4 for your fine. So here we are on H4. Right, so just see that. Let's take, for instance, I'm going and faster than faster than our shadow. 
but let's use that. Let's say, for instance, you are trading order flow, and after you got a violation of this last bearish candle, your trend became bearish. Right? After this large bearish candle, your trend became bearish. For those in the first stream program, I think the last set, we got to a point where we demystified um, trend. Yeah, with trend, we can catch big moves. But we demystified it and said, where well, you are following your trend, just pick your time frame where you determine your trend from. You will lose at some point when the trend is changing. Right, so if somebody's trend is H4, on Monday, he may be buying, and H1 is selling on Monday. H4 may lose, and H1 will win. H1 comes back on Monday again and wants to continue to buy. Then the trend aligns with H4. Now H4 will be winning, and H1 will lose. You just need to pick your trend. So let's say we've determined that we have this massive push to the downside. Price made that massive push to the downside. So it became bearish. The guys that are still looking at higher time frames will be looking for buys. And where would they see their buy? Price took this low top bottom edge, but it didn't give an entry. It gave an entry here at this paycheck. They will take this buy and they will make money. But the guy sitting on H4 is not interested in this buy. He's interested in a sell because his trend is now bearish. So what will he be looking out for? After this massive drop, he's waiting for price to come to a top edge. Can we see the top edge? Yes. Did price come to the top edge? Yes. Did price sell after the top edge? Yes. Perfect one. Perfect one. Right? And that was the OB. And price kept it away. Once price starts hitting these bottom edges, this guy is harvesting some profits, right? Again, let's see. We are still bearish. Let's say he missed out of all this sell because he wouldn't have hit. There was nothing taken there. He missed out on all of this sell. If he's trading on lower time frame, he'll catch it. But H4, he'll miss out on all of this sell. Can we see another sell again? Oh, yes. This is the top edge, C liquidity. Price took it, price dropped. Up to the next C liquidity, you invest your profit. Thank you, the market, right? You are waiting for another C liquidity. Can you see C liquidity, paycheck? We are waiting to see what price will do. The guys that are on lower time frame will catch this buy and they will catch this buy off of this C liquidity, C liquidity paycheck, right? The guys trading on H4 will not catch this because they are looking to sell. This is their own trade. Took out C liquidity, paycheck, dropped. Straight up, right? Again, C liquidity, paycheck, drop. The trend is already changing at this point in time, but the guys in H4 will not see it, right? Except if you trade order flow. If you trade order flow, this would have given you what to call a breaker, right? And at that point in time, you are beginning to look for buys. So you'll be entering all your buys here. All these low edges will be buys. But let's assume you don't even know. You are still looking for sales. So this is another sell opportunity. And again, you make your money. If you are trading up five minutes, like I'll be discussing with you guys, this move here on five minutes, the distance from this point to this point, we give you this 100, this is like 90, 100 pips, 100 pips, that short distance. You will make your winnings. You will make your winnings. Of course, if you're trading on five minutes, you have um, some losing trades, but you eventually make your winnings. So I'll give you my refinement um, to that for free here. So here we have another top edge taking, and you'll be looking for reasons to sell. If you're on H4, it will be looking like that is not a massive move. Again, the distance from that point to this point is 70 pips. How many of us will be happy with 70 pips? If you trade, put a one in the chat box if you'll be happy with 70 pips when you trade in a one day. <clears throat> put a one in the chat box if you'll be happy with 70 pips if you trade in one day. Oh, right. So, yeah, somebody's asking what's the difference between um, paycheck and C liquidity. I, I explained that earlier. I said C liquidity is the first top edge. Let's say you are selling. 
And I gave an example of A, B, C. Right? That C we need to pick before dropping. If there's another top edge above it, that top edge becomes a paycheck. The first top edge is the C liquidity. So you will discover that when we start, when we when we add Asian high and low to this, most times Asian high and, and low will be the clicks. Why yesterday high or low will be the paycheck, right? Like I said, let's define the terms. We'll not go too fast. If it takes us four days, we'll do it in four days. No rush. Right? Again, so by the time this price breaks through all this level, it's, this thing is obviously an uptrend. It is obviously an uptrend. So this guy is not looking to sell again, right? Price buys and this guy is not there. GG is not the only pair. He'll go and look for another pair, right? Then price starts coming back down. What are the things this guy will be looking for, right? As at the time price is coming down, as at this point here, let me put a, a line there. As at this point here, when price broke this, the C liquidity this guy can see is this, is this one here. He's seen this blue as the C liquidity. We are the paychecks that the guy can see. Paycheck one, paycheck two, paycheck three, paycheck four, like that. Anywhere here is looking for reasons to buy, right? The conditions we are going to put. There are some conditions. So where you have like five paychecks, our conditions to tell us specifically which of them we should be waiting for to take our trade, right? And we explain that. Clearly, I can see it clearly here. We will not have been thinking of entering here. This is the low of the previous week, and price just came straight for the low of that previous week. Like that's the low of the previous week. So yesterday, um, weekly, how should we be discussing weekly how low in this class? But no problem. Let's move on. So price came back straight for this C liquidity a paycheck that you could see as at the time you, you wrote. It came back for it didn't give you a reason to buy, came back straight for two of the paychecks and boom, that is your buy. Where are you going to? As at the time that price took this paycheck, what is the C liquidity you can see up here? So you can see, I told you guys that when you trade with this uh, methodology, even if it is scalping, for if you trade for like 10 days, for eight or nine out of those days, it will just give you like one is to two. One is to three. Sometimes you just scratch. One is to two, one is to three, scratch. One is to two, one is to three, scratch. One out of those 10 days, it will give you like one is to 20. Is that it will pain you if you are not around to take that trade. But again, you are still happy. One is to two, one is to one, one is to two, one is to one. At the end of the month, you've, you've, you've grown your account. You know. So here it took out that C liquidity took out a paycheck and that was a massive buy. All the way to this. Uh, uh, C liquidity. And then, and then we begin to look for reasons to either think of buying or selling again. So that's GJ again. So like I said, I wouldn't want this lecture to be um, too long. I'm going 